Are we good? We're on? We're live? Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, wherever you are. I guess it depends where you are. Uh, thanks for joining uh, us again for another Sylvia Findings live stream showroom event thing. Um, we do these every Wednesday, 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. And you can extrapolate to wherever you are around across the country or the world if you're watching from wherever um, to you know connect with our audience because um, uh, generally previously pre-pandemic uh, <laughs> we spend a lot of uh, you know weekends at shows you know visiting with our customers getting to know you guys one-on-one -on -one, which is awesome and uh, we miss that we miss connecting with our people so uh, we try to do this to feel a little more like we're together um, bring you some information, some uh, product info, some uh, show you some new things, things that we've got in. Uh, most importantly, answer any questions you have. A um, couple of housekeeping items. Uh, if you share this live stream, I'm not sure which button you would press somewhere. Uh, if you share that to wherever, you get a. We'll send you a free polishing cloth. One of these um, awesome polishing cloths. Um, and if you place an order today while we're on live uh, or after, um, you know, you'll get free shipping. Free regular shipping, I should say. Uh, or we'll pay the difference if you want to use uh, upgraded shipping, like DHL shipping. Um, which is kind of a nice segue into my... Uh, <laughs> weekly rant about the uh, poor state of uh, Canada Post service. I promise I'm not going to be really hard on them this week as much as I was last week. Uh, they do seem to be getting a little better. I think uh, the last longest, furthest away shipment we did were in uh, British Columbia. The last shipment we sent uh, furthest away was to um, Nova Scotia. And that one took 17 days. So we're getting better. They do say, though, Canada Post does say, though, um, that deliveries will take between 2 <laughs> and 45 days, which uh, I still find kind of amazing that they're willing to say, well, maybe it's 45 days. You never know. Um, I get that things are tough with, uh, you know, quarantine and... Uh, extra safety measures and stuff and uh, you know happy to give them the opportunity to keep us safe um, but still 45 days that's uh, hopefully we never have something that actually takes 45 days um, <laughs> anywhere but uh, this is what it is um, we've been having uh, uh, doing a lot of shipments especially to overseas customers uh, uh, Germany we've had a couple in Great Britain now uh, several to the states um, where people uh, upgrade their shipping to DHL um, which is especially good deal if you are ordering a lot of stuff uh, which we always uh, are welcome <laughs> to uh, uh, accept your orders for lots and lots of stuff um, I think right now the rate uh, into the U.S. is 25 bucks, and you'll get that within a day or two at the most. Um, to I know we have a customer in Germany who's ordered a couple times that uh, we ship stuff like on a Tuesday and she gets it on a Friday, which is to me is pretty amazing considering um, you know if you ship it via post you're looking at easily three weeks, four weeks. Um, I still have a couple of outstanding shipments that we shipped at the beginning of June that we're going to, uh, one was to Malta, which I guess <laughs> there's a boat involved no matter how you do it. Uh, so that's probably not over the, uh, out of the realm of possibility. But, you know, other shipments like to Australia and um, I have one to France that's still... Uh, six weeks I think we're still the last time I checked um, anyway but it's still somewhere which is nice um, <laughs> so uh, that's it that's it for my rant if you're shipping via post just beware things might not uh, come very quickly 
Um, we have a lot less problems shipping via post into the U.S. because we use a uh, service. I'm, if you've watched any of these previous streams, you know I've talked about them before. Uh, a service called Chit Chats, where they take the package that we uh, we buy U.S. Postal Service postage uh, online here, stick the U.S. Postal Service label right on the package. Uh, I bring it to them uh, because they're just here in Richmond uh, at the end of the day. And they stick the packages on a truck and drive them across the border and then mail them from Blaine, Washington uh, to wherever. So, um, and U.S. Postal Service, I just can't say enough good things about them. I think even considering um, their potential slowdowns, you know, or get stuff. Uh, uh, I think the last shipment that I remember looking at was shipped to Virginia, which is in the opposite coast of us, which if we were shipping from here to Nova Scotia, what was it, uh, uh, 17 days, um, you know, from here to Virginia, which is in another country, and as far away, at least, uh, on the other coast, uh, only took five days. So, you know, the whole trip from getting it across the border and then going into the mail and then, then going into the thing. So, um, U.S. customers, guy, your postal infrastructure is great. Um, please don't let <laughs> that go away. I know there's some uh, talk about <laughs> defunding the post office. Uh, is a bad idea. It's an awesome service. You guys have a great down there. Trust me. Um Anyway, uh, enough of that. Uh, I wanted to talk today a little bit about um, rings. You know, and we have tons of product here. Uh, everything from clasps and jump rings and beads and wire, sheet metal, um, uh, setting pendants. So, you know, pendants uh, for different shaped stones for setting. Um, bales for you know pinch bales and gluon bales and all kinds of bales. I think we talked a lot about bales last week. Um, uh, but we also have uh, a huge selection, like easily 300 different styles of rings. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, them and 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 uh, you know what you should be looking for depending on what kind of a stone you have. Um, you know, like all the the settings, like all the pendants, all the, the um, whatever, all the stone settings, they all um, are basically built or designed around a seat for the stone to sit in. And depending on the shape of the seat, um, the ring may be more appropriate for a cabochon or more appropriate for a cut stone. Obviously, when you're um, talking about a ring uh, with a cut stone, the setting has to be high enough up uh, uh, from the face of the ring so that the culet, the, the pointy edge of the, the bottom of the stone, uh, doesn't jab you in the finger. So, um, just let me just look, look through here quickly. Um, a couple of examples here. Um, So, here's a good example of uh, a ring. See that um, seat there uh, is a little bit beveled, right? Uh, and by the seat, I mean... Let me just get a pen quickly. By the seat, I mean this part of the setting right right there where the bottom of the stone sits on that so that has a little uh, beveled surface you could definitely put a cabochon in there um, you know uh, hopefully the cabochon goes right to the edges of the uh, prongs so it'll sit on the top of that uh, very easily but um, this is designed for uh, beveled stone, uh, cut stone, and it's got a basket in the bottom. So depending on the height of the pavilion of your stone, this will definitely uh, sit high enough up um, from your finger that the stone won't, you know, pinch you and scrape against your 
finger. Whereas something like this, right? Uh, a little pear-shaped stone uh, setting. Um, well, I guess it depends. Situational, but depending on the shape of the, the size of the uh, of the cue of the the pavilion and the culet on, on the ring, uh, you know that might stick past the bottom of that thing and poke against your your skin. So every time you actually pulled it on and pushed it on, um, you know it would scratch. So when you're looking at uh, rings, you should definitely take into consideration first of all the kind of stone that you're putting in there. Um, and uh, while most of the rings, I think, you could get away with putting, um, you know, cut stones in the ones that are designed for cabs or, um, you know, ones that you could put cabs in, ones that are designed for cut stones, some you just couldn't. Like there's, you know, this one here, nice round stone, uh, nice flat uh, seat for a cabochon or a round. This is for a, uh, what a 10 millimeter cabochon. Um, you know, this has a, a bar for security in the bottom of that seat. Uh, you couldn't put a cut stone in there. Um, you know, it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't work. So, um, you know, I guess that thing, this is, uh, MTR 197. It's a good versatile one. $14 and 86 cents is a retail price and $9 and 70 cents is a wholesale price. Um, these have great, nice, big, long prongs in there. You know, I've seen, uh, so you see so many, um, uh, some, you know, small cabochons that are hand cut, uh, especially when they're things like moonstones or um, uh, labradorite, you know, uh, opals, you know, stones that uh, have uh, chatoyants, you know, that uh, flash uh, in them. Uh, a lot of times uh, lapidaries will cut them, you know, deeper because the shallower you make them, the thinner you make them, the less of that flash you have, the less you have of the, uh, the uh, internal gap matrices of the stones working against each other to create that, you know, those colors. Um, so deeper stones always get better uh, flash, better colors, uh, always, usually. Uh, I've seen some opals that are nice and thick, but they're so dark that uh, you almost can't see the colors in them unless they're, unless they're in the light. Um, but usually, um, the thicker the stone, the more interesting the colors are, the more uh, flash you have. And these prongs would be great for those uh, kind of things. Um, now, uh, one thing about prongs, and it might be a good time to show you one from, uh, I don't know, one of our many men's rings so here's a gentleman's ring which uh you know the seat on this again uh beveled this is uh pretty high up uh of a basket um uh, you know uh so depending on the shape of the the pavilion of the stone you could definitely put a cut stone in there uh you could definitely get away with a capuchon in there pretty easily uh but these prongs are you know giant you know, clearly they're bigger than you would need them for, for the vast majority of stones. Um, and they're done this way on purpose, because depending on if you are putting a cab, a Sean, or you're putting a cut stone in there, depending on the edge geometry of the, uh, the you know, the, the shape of the stone, uh, you would need to cut these down uh, and dress them accordingly, you know. Um, generally, and I could draw this pretty quickly. Here's my terrible drawing of a stone. But generally, a prong setting, you only need this to go up about 10% up the size of this, this edge here. This, right? The, the girdle. Uh, right. um, up above the girdle. Um, I usually like to cut them so the uh, end of the prong will end about 50% up the height of this thing. But I think uh, if I remember correctly, when I was uh, doing 
studying this uh, stone setting classes is that uh, I was told, you know, 10% is um, generally the most acceptable uh, height. Uh, you don't need very much of the prong to get over onto the the, the, the girdle, onto the crown. Um, you get past the girdle because the girdle is this edge and then this side is, the, you know, the crown. Um, you don't want to get too far up there because then the prongs begin to occlude the facets and you might lose some of the flash, although I didn't really notice that uh, most of the time. Um, so for this kind of a ring, you know, you would put the stone in there, you would uh, get a sharpie and draw a line, uh, you know, where you need that to go, uh, snip the excess off. Um, you know, obviously you want to get those as <laughs> even as possible. Um, and then file the edges. Uh, I always, almost always like to file, uh, you know, the inside a little bit flat. And then, uh, you know, you know, file the edge into a nice little dome. Um, and you could do that with a cupper or just with a, a regular old little needle file to file that into a, you know, a curve. Uh, so you get a little bit flat on the inside, a little bit curved at the top. Um, and then, you know, you could just do that with a regular old, uh, you know, cutters and then a file to make the edges uh, the right shape. And then using one of these, uh, you know, uh, polishing blocks, we sell these. Uh, one side, the green side is nice and coarse um, to take out any file marks. And then the white side is, uh, you know, real fine polish um, to get the edges nice and shiny. And then, of course, you could use, uh, if you were a real jeweler, you'd spend a few minutes uh, using a couple different kinds of rouge or maybe some uh, Kratex wheels to polish this to make the surfaces, you know, perfect. But then you could, you know, push these prongs over onto the stone and it'll be perfect, you know, uh, halfway up the, the crown, 20% um, of the crown. It doesn't really matter. It depends on the person. Um but uh, this is why at shows, sometimes when people come with a thing, or they want a men's rings with these, um, you know, if I haven't brought a, my flex shaft or a thing, it's tricky to set these at shows because the prongs uh, really most of the time need, need to be, you know, uh, uh, cut down to size uh, as you need. Here's another uh, example of that, a ring that is specifically designed with prongs that are giant, uh, you know, for those cabs, um, I don't know, maybe this is longer than you <laughs> strictly need them to be, but I have seen some cabs that are that high that these prongs would not be uh, inappropriate. These are already flat on the inside, um, so when you measure these and cut these down to the right shape, uh, or the right length, I should say, uh, very easy just to uh, file the tops of these um, prongs into a nice round little curve and push them over onto the onto the thing. Again, nice flat uh, seat in there. So uh, with a flat seat like this, it's you know pretty much um, saying that, oh, this needs to have a cab in there. Although you could definitely get away with putting a cut stone uh, in there. It would just depend on the uh, the edge geometry. You know, the, 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 the higher up this uh, seat is without a without a bevel uh, the higher the stone will sit up in there kind of thing and it's not a very deep um, basket um, so it would have to be a pretty shallow stone anyway um, but then you could get away with cutting these prongs way down uh, and just pushing that onto the uh, onto the crown of the stone anyway this is a really good versatile ring uh, MTR 029 is the code number and the retail price is $13.05, and the wholesale price is $9.50. That's for a 10 by 12 millimeter uh, cab. Um, you know, you see a lot of cabs at shows that are giant, that are just massive. And um, you know, we don't have a lot of really huge uh, ones, but the ones we have are awesome, like this one. Gosh, I've set so many stones in this ring. Um, uh, you know, some, and, and actually a lot of the times when people order custom stuff, which uh, I haven't spoken about yet, but l let me just segue quickly into uh, custom uh, things here. Um, if you have a stone that, you know, your <laughs> uncle, the lapidary uh, cut for you and, um, 
and it's great and it's beautiful and it's gorgeous, has deep sentimental value, uh, but you can't find a ring that will fit uh, that, especially if it's a great big one. Something like this uh, is a good place to, to start, you know? Uh, we've done, I know we've done, because I've actually done the drawings for them, uh, a couple of custom rings where this ring was the basis for them, and then we just adjusted the shape of the basket, you know, to go or to, to match the size of your stone. Um, and our custom services, uh, uh, deeply underutilized service that uh, I think more people should take advantage of because, uh, especially for custom jewelry, boy, if you walk into a jewelry store and you bring them a cabochon and you say, hey, I have this ring uh, or this cabochon that I, this stone I want a ring made for, without even looking at the stone, the jeweler first will say, cha-ching, you know, here's my payday. Uh, but you're going to be looking at, you know, between three and six hundred dollars for them to... Uh, uh, cast a ring in sterling, a lot more if it's gold, uh, because they have to um, uh, actually carve out of wax. Usually they do it. Uh, some are starting to use more, um, you know, 3D CAD drawings, and, uh, and they'll do a drawing, and then they'll do a 3D print of, uh, you know, the, the wax or resin, uh, blank that they'll use to cast later, or they'll make a mold of it, um, and they, or or not, uh, they might just cast it. Um, um, but they're going to charge you an arm and a leg for that. Uh, where our price for custom items, you know, something like this, uh, is under five grams, that would probably cost you like sixty dollars uh, Canadian dollars. So if you're in the U.S., it's way less. You're looking at like you know, 50 bucks. Um, and then we have different options for shipping if you're willing to wait uh, and have it come from the factory with one of our normal shipments, uh, then delivery to here is free. And then if we ship it from here to wherever uh, into the States, it's like, you know, eight, $8 Canadian. Um, if you're shipping it within Canada, it's more because I'm trying not to dunk on Canada Post too much, but uh, Canada Post shipping is a lot more expensive um, than U.S. Post. But anyway, uh, or you could pick it up at the office. Uh, and if you pick it up at the office, we'll even uh, set set the stone for you. But anyway, uh, this is a, the, the has been the basis for a lot of the custom rings, uh, just because it's a good, awesome, uh, classic, uh, simple design, right? Split shank. Um you know, prongs are a good uh, height for cabs or uh, cut stones, although this, uh, given that the seat has a bevel in there along the edge, right? This, see that bevel in, in that seat? Uh, this setting was clearly designed for cut stones, although, uh, like most of the ones uh, like this, you could use it for a lot, for either cut stones or cabochons. Um this MTR124 is the code number of that, and the retail price is $24.93, and the wholesale price is $18.65. Uh, now this one, uh, the, the, the production one that we have is for a 16 by 24 uh, cabochon, which, uh, or, or cut stone, which is uh, I think probably the biggest um, ring that we have. Um, if you need something bigger than that, <laughs> well, actually, I, I have seen lots of rings bigger than that. I guess it depends on, uh, <laughs> you know, what your taste is. Um, I just want to show another couple of things here. Uh, God, there's so many rings. This will take hours. Um, if you have a stone that's a really unusual shape, um, this is a really awesome, versatile uh, little ring. Um, and this one we've got in so many, I think we've got from like size 5 all the way up to size 12. Um, MTR 369, the retail price is 1724, and the wholesale price is 1078. Um, and uh, this, you can just take these uh, wires and bend them into uh, whatever. You know, I've done uh, so many different things. You know, people uh, um, at shows, uh, golly, there's almost always a dealer that have Herkimer 
uh, diamonds, which uh, if you've ever seen them, they're just kind of irregular shaped um, crystalline stones um, that are, you know, awesome. But uh, I've s we have almost no um, settings that will work for those because they're, you know, completely irregular shaped and uh, most of our settings are uh, appropriate for calibrated stones. Uh, but this one you could do, golly, whatever you want. Here's a, a sample of a, I guess an egg-shaped cabochon that I uh, <laughs> just made little, you know, spirals in the ends of those wires and pushed those down onto the, the cab and held that in there. That's a really neat little uh, thing. Set lots of, uh, you know, uh, cabs this way. Um, you know, irregular shaped uh, labradorite. I've done a bunch of. Uh, I guess it depends on you know what you've got. Uh, one of the great things about uh, the gem shows that we uh, you hopefully will start doing again soon, um, next couple of months, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Um, is you get so many uh, you know people who actually cut their own stones and uh, you know you'll get some calibrated ones you know but 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 it seems some people tend to be drawn to the irregular shaped stones and uh, it's nice to have an option you know for them you know, to do that uh, now last time marble was going to the factory to visit the factory to uh, I guess uh, uh, <laughs> kick them all into shape uh, get get everything uh, uh, scheduled as far as production schedules go and stuff he asked off the top of my head if I could think of anything that um, uh, we needed anything we were missing if there were any gaps in the product lines uh, and when I thought of rings I thought the things that we're missing mostly are settings for round stones. We have tons of ovals, like, gosh, I don't think there's any size oval up to, you know, 10 by 14 and smaller that we don't have a ring that would work that somebody would be happy with. But uh, for round stones, uh, it was curious to me that uh, we only had a handful of them. Well, um, <laughs> this has all changed now. Uh, the thing after his last trip we got all these uh, things these are all new um setting or new rings um god these are just awesome everything from little tiny uh get this Boing. from these cute little I can make this go here This is not going to focus on the thing. Let me try to get that. Right. A couple little CZs there, a couple little curly cues, and a cute little tiny three millimeters uh, setting. I don't know anybody, any jeweler, who doesn't have, um, you know, a bunch of three millimeter, four millimeter stones lying around that they've picked up, that they've. Uh, you know, acquired from repairs that they've done or, uh, you know, just have lying around. Um, God, you just pop a little stone in that and you've got a beautiful heirloom. Um, this retail price is only $10.68. And, um, and the retail price is $6.68. You know, 10 bucks for a ring um, that you could put a $10 stone in and sell for $50 is is a no-brainer, you know, if you're doing this uh, to sell. Or uh, super impressive if you are just giving it to your nieces or your girlfriends or whatever. Um, that's a cute, that, that's a cute little, I don't know, that's a nice little girl's ring, niece ring. <laughs> I don't know why I think of nieces. I have one. A niece, not a ring. <laughs> uh, here's another one. Right? Three millimeters chock full of CZs around the outside of that. I don't know if you can see those. But that's just gorgeous. And a couple of... Here's a... 
interesting in that uh, this is for four millimeter stones, but you know we don't have many rings that have you know for, for multiple stones. Um, we have one other. I'll try to find it uh, around here somewhere. Um, um, but this is just awesome, right? These cute little uh, uh, rows of cubic zirconia that that uh, end in. I think it could almost be like sort of reminiscent of a Pisces or a yin yang sort of uh, thing once you get the stones in there. I think those are awesome. You could put two of the same stones, or maybe, you know, uh, maybe you and your significant other's birthstones. Oh, that's so cute. Oh my gosh. Uh, here's a so MTR505, $12.75 is the uh, retail price. And seven ninety seven is a wholesale price. It's cute. Let me uh, pump it up. Here's a five millimeter round. Again, this setting, uh, you know, it's got good size prongs, so you could put a cab in there or a cut stone. It's got a nice uh, basket, deep enough for most cut stones. Uh, classic split shank. Can't go wrong with that. That's almost a solitaire. Not quite, but it's a little more interesting than a solitaire, really, yeah, as far as I'm concerned. This MTR 454, uh, $11.22 is retail price, and 701 is the wholesale price. Um, and if you're not familiar with the wholesale resale structure, basically, uh, uh, the wholesale minimum is $150. If you spend $150 or more, uh, you can get the items at the wholesale price. That's $150 at the wholesale level. Here's a ah, gorgeous 6mm uh, ring. Look at that basket. It's so cool. It's uh, kind of a solitaire with um, uh, the seat sitting, you know, halfway up in there. This highlights not only the you know, the table and, and the crown of the ring, uh, but also the pavilion, you know, right up against the, you know, the finger that you could see the whole ring in there. Um, it's not usual. Usually the, you know, rings try to hide those. Um, there's a great couple of some uh, alternating cubic zirconia uh, sections and a nice little wave, wavy sort of uh, thing. Right? That's just great. I'm really, really happy with these marble. <laughs> I will say, uh, here's a one. You can't go wrong, right? With vines, flowery, flowery things. You know, more cubic zirconia elements up near the the seat, up near the the uh, setting. Again, good sized prongs. That bevel. You could use this for a cut stone or a cabochon. Really appropriate for either of those. And I think most of these new rings, we've got them in everything from size 6 to 10? 6 to 9? 6 to 10? 6, to nine. six, seven, six 7, 8, and 9. Yeah. Small ring. Yeah, really small rings. Although, uh, if there's something that you find really nice, uh, you know, we're happy to make it uh, custom for you. <laughs> we're happy to do anything custom. Here's another one. God. Just love these filigree style rings. You know, this has got a nice deep basket, um, but but the top of that and 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 the you know the uh, uh, the build up to the top of that is so interesting that you know a cab could easily wouldn't seem out of place in in here. Uh, although you could definitely use a cut stone in there too, even one with a really super deep pavilion. Um, which is a problem for rings, you know, because a lot of times the, the stones have got to sit so high up in the setting that it just looks weird, or it looks like, um, golly, if I'm just walking uh, around, I'm going to catch the stone on something and it'll go flying. Um, you know, but on a gorgeous, uh, you know, deep basket like this that's kind of disguised with this uh, very, very cool uh, filigree work, um, really clever design, really awesome. Uh, again, uh, ideal for a cabochon or a cut stone. Um, rows of cubic zirconias on either size. Uh, this is MTR 446 
and the retail price is only $16.52 and the wholesale price $10.33 um, and that's for an 8 millimeter stone um, and I'll just show you one more of these uh, actually I'm going to show you two of these um, but these are some 10 millimeter um, stones this really interesting let me see if I can get this to get in focus better No, it's going to help me. Come on, do it. No. All right, let's try it out. Oh, there you go. There's a good view of it. All right. Those kind of uh, arches, uh, you know, between the outside edge and the inside seat um, with pairs of cubic zirconias all the way around. Some beautiful texture in there. Uh, again, the seat, perfect for a cabochon. Um I don't know, that basket is pretty deep, but not, I don't know, it would depend on the uh, <laughs> on the shape of the, if you had a really shallow cut stone, uh, you could definitely put that in there, although most 10 millimeter cut stones have pretty big pavilions, uh, because, you know, the deeper the pavilion, the, the more color enhanced the stone seems, you know, uh, I've seen... Uh, aquamarines that uh, if they were shallow would be almost clear uh, but the deeper they get you know the bluer they get so uh, without uh, chemically or heat treating them or radiating them uh, to get different colors uh, in the stones uh, just cutting them deeper uh, gets deeper uh, stone so probably most ideal for uh, cabochon uh, this ring but uh, I just uh, gorgeous Nice round. Um, and this one, uh, MTR521 is the code. Retail price is $17, and the wholesale price is $10.62. Golly, a great price. And here's my last little uh, of the new rings, uh, although we have a whole other tray um, of new rings that I could show you that are not round. But... Um, Maybe I'll save that for another time, next time. I might show you one or two. I can't resist. Anyway, here's a, another nice round, you know, 10 millimeter uh, ring. Floral accents on the side, again, with some uh, cubic zirconia accents in the little uh, leaves on the side. Right, nice flat uh, seat for a cabochon, although this uh, basket is deep enough that probably most cut stones would fit in there uh, again all you'd have to do is put the cut stone in there and then just check to see that the culet doesn't stick out past the uh, you know the bottom of the ring um, and even then if it only you know packs it comes out a little especially if the the culet isn't uh, pointy a lot of times you'll see uh, again it depends on the cut of your stone and what what the 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 lapidary wants the top of the stone to look like um, but I've seen a lot of them where the culet is um, filed flat instead of to a point, and that just gives you a little uh, different uh, experience at the very top when you're looking through all that. Because, you know, the flash of all those kind of cut stones is just the, you know, the, the reflections of uh, the light against the different facets against each other. And, and um, by so many different cuts, you can't even know, you don't even know where to get started. Um I'm going to show you one more thing, and uh, what did I do with it? If you've ever been to the shows, you've definitely seen these uh, rings in the trays. We've got one that's a good, you know, pretty uh, chunky sized um, ring. Uh, a little bit of a flat edge at the top, and a square hole in the top. This one... Uh, daintier much daintier version of that same thing with that flat hole in the top and we have another one here um, with a lovely uh, swoop up at the top and that uh, uh, square peg at the bottom and what those are for these rings are for um, and this uh, I think marble invented this which is pretty ingenious if you ask me we have a whole series a whole line of um, different settings and these settings have a square 
post uh, in there, right? And you can take these settings. Um, so get the ring that's the size that you want, if you want on whatever I think. And these we have in size 5 all the way up to size 12. Um, the setting that you want, get, uh, you know, you've got a stone um, that you need to have uh, fit, right? So you get this uh, setting and you just pop that in there, right? Um, turn that upside down on your soldering board. A little chip of solder right on that little thing, a little heat, heat that up, solder that together. Uh, you know, polish the inside of that, and there you go. Instant setting. You're going to have it, you know, parallel with the, the shank of the ring or perpendicular to the shank of the ring. I guess if you really wanted to, you could even twist it so that it was, uh, <laughs> you know, something other than um, perpendicular. But we've got these settings in, I forget, like eight or so different styles, right? And we've got these perfect for cabochons, right, with the little, you know, rings in the, uh, or stars in the edges to push down onto the stones. Um, we've got other ones like these, right, for great big tall cabs. Let's see here. Classic basket settings in ovals uh, and, and you know most of these uh, the oval ones we've got everything from like three by five millimeter all the way up to uh, 13 by 18 millimeters so um, most calibrated sizes of stones you'll be able to find something that fits in there okay. um, got these. some rounds on that right that same same concept um, and these ones, these are in a little plastic bag, but I'll show you one. Um, right? That classic Tiffany, you know, prong setting that works great in this ring. That thing will sit down in there, right? Right, so just you know, a little dab of solder there, file that off, make that perfect. And then, golly, it's just an awesome uh, concept, uh, you know, for any size stone. Um, you know, if I were a jeweler, I'd have uh, you know a couple of each of these uh, different ring styles in every size, and uh, um, I don't know, I'd probably pick one or two of each of all of the settings just to have there, you know, in in a little organizer box, you know, somebody walks in uh, to my shop or, or my booth if I'm a, a th uh, at a show, hey, I've got a little stone here sort of thing. Yeah, I can do it. You don't even have to question whether or not it's possible because, you know, the stuff is all here and it's already all made. You know, there are a lot of people who are really good, really comfortable with, um, Things like soldering. Soldering is really easy. Um, I know some people have difficulty with it, but it's more a function of um, uh, how you think about what you're doing. You know, when you're soldering, you're not really melting the solder. That's not the point of it when you put the torch on the piece of solder. The, the point of it isn't really to melt the solder. The point of it is to heat the pieces uh, that you want to join together uh, all the way until they reach the temperature that the solder melts and flows against them and flows into the crystalline structure of the metal and joins them together that way. Um, lots of people are super uh, comfortable with soldering. And even if you're not, boy, two or three practices on this kind of thing and you, you'd get it. You know, it's really not that hard. You don't need a lot of equipment. You can do it with a little uh, butane torch that you can find at a kitchen store, uh, you know, to make your creme brulee. <laughs> Uh, preferably one that, or I've seen them uh, really inexpensive uh, at like Home Depot, 
you can buy the little burns o uh, torches, um, you know, uh, 40 bucks or so. Um, although most good jewelry supplies will have them. There's a good brand out there that I think a lot of people use called Blazer that makes a good torch that's around a hundred bucks, but it'll last you forever. Um, and uh, oh, just a note about the gas, you know, just use butane that you can buy at any tobacconist or um, novelty shops have them usually. It's just a can of butane. Don't buy the butane at the hardware store. Uh, buy it at a tobacconist because the, um, the ones that people use for uh, filling up your butane lighters, um, the gases are normally triple refined or quintuple refined. And the more refined the gas is, um, the longer your torch will last. The diaphragm in there just gets gunked up if you use the crappy uh, butane, uh, but not important. You know, you could literally spend 10 minutes at a booth, at a show, uh, if it's not busy, you know, solder this thing together, throw it in the pickle, pull it out, uh, clean it up, uh, set the person's stone in there, and they would think you were like magic. Um, so those uh, jewelry findings, jewelry settings, are you can find those on the website. Um, I think they're an awesome uh, concept, awesome deal. Um, it's a little more involved than just buying a, a, you know, a ring setting that fits your stone and putting the stone in there and pushing that in. I know I'm six minutes over. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up uh, pretty soon. Um, <laughs> I do tend to ramble. Um, but I think those are just an awesome uh, concept and an awesome uh, thing. And again, you know, uh, jewelry fabrication is, uh, you know, can be tricky. But if you break it down into little things, like you don't actually have to learn how to fabricate the ring uh, or the setting, you know, building settings. I've done it when I was learning uh, uh, jewelry making um, fabrication, the, you know, the doing, making different stone baskets and different stone settings uh, was really a pain, a pain. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but these are already made for you, and there's so many different styles to choose from and different uh, 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 shapes um, and sizes to fit most um, calibrated stones. Uh, obviously, if it's a weird shape or a weird uh, size, um, you know, you're not going to find something that works. But for most uh, stones, I think we've got something that will work for that. And um, it's simple. It's pretty easy. Don't let people tell you that jewelry making is hard. Soldering is not is not hard. Um, it's just a function of trying it, doing it, not not worrying about uh, if you melt one or two pieces as you're learning. <laughs> um, but you should find a good uh, book or something that uh, or a good YouTube video. Uh, although I hate sending people to YouTube because there's so many bad jewelry uh, uh, videos on YouTube. I remember I, I used to teach a class in uh, uh, etching uh, on silver, etching on brass, on copper and things, and the different chemicals you can use for those. Uh, and I remember somebody sent me a link to uh, a YouTube video saying, hey, Mark, would this work? And the person was using literally battery acid on their things. And I was like, oh, my God, please, please don't use battery acid when you're uh, etching. Um so I haven't seen anything quite so egregious as far as soldering goes, that sort of thing. But you can find some simple YouTube uh, um, uh, videos to help you learn that. And if you have any questions, uh, I'm here. I'm always here. I'm a resource. I've been uh, doing jewelry for uh, 20 more years, 20-something more years than I care to admit. Longer than I've done anything else besides breathing is the way I like to uh, describe it. So... Uh, I'm a resource. We're a resource here. This is what we're here for, to help you out. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, about any of the rings or about any of the uh, findings, obviously I didn't talk about any of the new pendants um, this week, um, but I'll do more of those next week. I'll just uh, think, oh, you know what? I did put aside one. So here, I'm going to do this. My one favorite new thing every week, and this one when I saw it, blew me away. I just love this. I think this is my favorite new uh, pendant setting. For a pear shape, 
a 21 by 30 pair. Um, it's a glue in uh, uh, setting, but I just love that fish with the, the garnet eyes and the uh, uh, margasites in the scales. Nice big bale, so you can put a chain of just about any size in there. Um, that you know, this is one of those things where it's like it doesn't matter what stone you put in there, it's gonna be gorgeous. People are gonna, you're gonna wear it, and people are gonna stop you and say, Holy crap, where'd you get that? That's beautiful. Um, and again, this uh, MTP 1167, uh, and the retail price is $28.23, wholesale price is $17.64. And that is my my favorite new pendant <laughs> that I was looking at today. Um, sometimes, you know, you see something in a tray and it just, your eyes just go to it and it's like, oh crap, I need to make something with that. Um, uh, I've done lapidary, I've done cutting stones. I did that uh, class at the Richmond Gem uh, and Mineral Society. I know I got their name wrong. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so I've cut stones and know how to do it. Um, it's one of those things that, uh, and if you ever have a, you know, find a, a you know, um, a gem and mineral club near you and uh, go and take a look. A lot of them have classes that are really inexpensive. Uh, a lot of times people will just show you how to do it. There's not a lot of people uh, still doing lapidary work. It seems um the demographic is skewing older and older, <laughs> and uh, this is one of those skills that you really don't want to um, die out. When the people, who, I don't mean mean to be indelicate about it, but when the people who are doing it, uh, um, you know, reach an age where they can't do it anymore, you don't want these kind of skills to die out. So find a lapidary club near you and go and look and see what they have to do. I will tell you from experience that um, cutting stones is not as hard as you would think it would be, but it's one of those skills that it's easy to do, but uh, less easy to do really well. Um, you know, again, the more you do it, the, the better you get at it, uh, the more you realize, uh, you know, mistakes you're making along the way as you do it. Um, but there's no good way to learn that stuff uh, without getting your hands on it and doing it and, and making mistakes along the way. Um, I've always found those are the best ways to learn you know, those things. So I'm going to leave you with that. Again, a couple uh, housekeeping things. Um, thanks for joining us this week. Again, every Wednesday uh, morning at 10.30. Uh, share this video, wherever the button is on your screen, and uh, we'll send you a free polishing cloth. We'll know that. If you have any other uh, questions you would like answered, um, comments, concerns, you can either leave a comment here or email us or direct message us if you're um, on Facebook still. Um, we're always here for you. You can, uh, if you're on the website, we have a new, uh, new, a uh, couple of weeks old uh, chat um, box that you can click on, and uh, either one of us, me or Marble or Nelson, will get on. And uh, uh, unless it's the middle of the night. Um, will be sleeping, so we won't answer you. But, uh, you know, I've picked up, I've been up at, uh, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night and had somebody uh, log on, answer a question, and I get them on my phone. Um, if I'm not feeling too sleepy, I'll jump in and start, you know, chatting with them. So we're there most of the time. You know, we're trying to be here for you. Um, because uh, for years and years, you guys were here for us, and uh, we miss you at shows. Uh, golly, we miss doing shows. I can't wait till we can start doing those again um, and seeing everybody, because um, something about the the one-on-one, -on -one, um, that really makes it uh, worth it. Uh, awesome. A uh, couple of other notes. Uh, our showroom is uh, open again by appointment, so if you just call ahead and make sure um, we know you're coming, we can uh, prepare a thing, wipe down all the counters, and uh, make sure everything is nice and uh, COVID-free for you. Um, uh, what am I missing? I know I'm missing something. Uh, talked about the free cloth. Oh, free shipping again. Uh, if you order stuff, uh, I guess in the next uh, 90 seconds while I'm still on here, um, you know, free shipping uh, is included. 
I am not looking at the feed, so I don't know how many people have logged on or if there were any questions. Um, I think Marble would have told me if there were questions. So I'm going to assume that you're all good. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope there was some information here that was good. Uh, please log on to the website and have a look at the rings. Uh, maybe you can look at them with a little bit, uh, you know, clearer eye, a little bit less um, trepidation. Uh, you could just jump right in there and say, oh, yeah, this is what Mark was talking about. Um, uh, and be, uh, you know, fearless. You know, we have a good return policy. So <laughs> if the, when you get it, the, the stones, if they don't fit, uh, you know, ship them back and we'll ship you one that will work. Um, you know, we're here for you. Um, so thanks for joining. Oh, God, I went really late oh, I, again. Um, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next week, 10.30 Pacific time, uh, next Wednesday, for the Sylvia Findings uh, live showroom live stream. Um, okay, thanks. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, goodbye. We're done. Are we done? Mm -hmm.